Hello everyone, Mr. Happy here, and welcome back to another Final Fantasy XIV Let's Play part series thing. Don't know why I've had that weird introduction these last two times. So I said forget the four tombstones, because I teleported to Western Lenosia to do it, and remembered that the Pharaoh Sirius quest is actually here. So I'm just going to do Pharaoh Sirius, I'll get my gloves after this run. So in order to unlock Pharaoh Sirius, unlike the other quests where you did it in Mordona, you have to unlock it here from Diamanda in Aleport. So it's a quest called Serious Business. Ah, they sure do love their puns. The follow-up quest is called Why So Serious. So, yeah, Koji Fox, you got a you got a hell of a type of humor, man. Oh man, you should see one of the later quests. He references a lot of stuff. There's a 300 reference in there that I just, I just, <laughs> it makes me laugh every time. So uh, all we gotta do real quickly is do this quest, and we will unlock Barrow Sirius. Come on. Don't need the cutscene. I don't need it. And now it's going to send us over there in order to complete the quest. And we'll be good to go. So in order to reach the area that it's telling me to go, talk to this fairy skipper. You already went there once. It's at the Isle of Umbra. You've already been here for the main story. So you should remember how to get here. It's only, I think it's 40 gil, I think it said, or something like that. Hey, here we are. And now we have Pharaoh Sirius. This is probably the single most frustrated dun frustrating dungeon you will do as a new player because you do too much DPS it hurts you do too little DPS it hurts you don't heal enough it hurts you heal too much it hurts it's a really annoying dungeon you'll see what I mean after we get past the first boss though you're generally in the clear so let me really quickly just go over my dungeons because I haven't been doing that Pharaoh Sirius here we go joining hopefully we get a decent group I'm gonna leave all the commentary until the dungeon itself actually starts so I'll see you guys when my cue pops Oh, hey, <laughs> I was watching YouTube videos, and uh, would you look at that? Comments. Oh, wow, and I was the last person, so I'm the scumbag who, <laughs> after all these videos, I was the last person. I waited six seconds. After all that, it had to be me, right? All right, let me move my mouse cursor out of the way. So, by the way, favorite dungeon uh, for music, this is not, okay, not my favorite. It's my second favorite. I love this dungeon, though, for its its music. You could just, just listen to it. It's so good. It's so good. Just listen. I don't even care. I don't even want to talk the whole video. Let's just listen to the music. So, here we go. Pharaoh Sirius. Let's see what kind of run it ends up being. So, it looks like it's going to be a half speed run. So, these the only enemies that are a real threat to you here at the start are the Sirius Elps. And honestly, I hope he stops here for that reason. So, the main reason why these Elps are a big problem is because they have an attack that doesn't show you the target uh, notifier. But what it does is it hits everyone in an AoE and it gives them vulnerability up, which makes it so that when they get hit by future attacks, it just deals more damage. You know, it's standard, and this is the attack. Oh, no, it died. Good, good, good. Oh, no, it hit us with the attack. Never mind. That is the attack. The tank takes a ton of damage if he gets hit by subsequent attacks after that. And because I don't have the greatest of gear, you can see that that's a bit... Oh, I'm healing in fucking cleric stance! My bad. Sorry. <laughs> he said no problem. It was it was seriously my bad. I was healing in cleric stance like an idiot. That's what I get. I'm still watching the YouTube video. I was watching one of Mithri video <laughs> Mithri's videos. And I died. I I was watching because I was I was I was on his channel and <laughs> I was watching the 10 million gill in uh in, I think it was 10 million gil an hour. Here, I closed it now because I didn't want to fuck up again. <laughs> um, I was watching that because I was like, damn, he got a lot of views on this video. Nice. And <laughs> it got me killed. What the? F Are we still aggro to this? Well, all right. So pretend that didn't happen. That was my fault because <laughs> I was healing with player stands on. <laughs> Let's just pretend that never happened, right? Can we cut away from that? We're going to cut away from No, we're not. We're going to leave that in. <laughs> So that's what, so here, all right, let's make a lesson out of it. So here's what happens if you heal in cleric stance. So this is why you shouldn't do that. <laughs> this just became a, a guide video. <laughs> guide, don't heal in cleric stance. Genius. Genius, how have I not thought of this before? Well, at least the Elps is dead. At least it means he can pull more. No, no, you can, all right, fine. <laughs> he doesn't trust me anymore. He doesn't trust me anymore. He's like, I don't trust this guy. I ain't doing anything bigger than this. All right. Well, that's a different story. That's a bit of a different story. 
Getting hit by AoEs is a bit different than uh, than me being in cleric stance. Seems to be a seems to be a fun thing to do right about now is get hit by AoEs. I'm not having. Fun. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna have to be very careful with my holies here. I'm standing like just out of AoE range too, so I'm gonna. Ugh. This is gonna be rough. We should have also these things are being alive way too long. I mean, I shouldn't be surprised. We honestly shouldn't be pulling that big anyway. We have Ninja Bard, which in a previous video I stated is not a very good AOE combination. Um, but on top of that, one of our ninjas, a newcomer, so he's doing single target rotations while the Bard was trying to AOE. I was the only one who could provide like very, very high AOE damage. So big pulls like that weren't a good idea. Not saying it's a tank's fault. He went in, he gave it a shot. He realized it probably wasn't a good idea. We went back, we did a, a smaller pull, we killed one enemy on its own. Then we went ahead and we did a smaller AoE pull, and we're fine. This isn't that long of a dungeon anyway. There's four bosses in this dungeon, which is... <laughs> if you can call the third boss a boss, which you'll see what I mean soon, but you can barely even call him that. I also don't have Benediction anymore, I have to keep in mind, so I have to be very, very careful. I'm also going to move away in case it tries to do that attack again. All right, and it's dead, so we don't have to worry about it. So after you get to that part, so the Alps, you saw the dangerous attack. Another thing that's going to happen is you're going to occasionally walk across an area, and there's going to be zombies on the ground. They'll actually get up when you walk over them, and they'll start attacking you. Just kill them when they get up. Be done with it. As soon as you kill this first set of zombie sailors, you'll move up the dungeon into the second part. We have one more pull here before the, before the first boss, and the first boss is really the big thing. If you can get past the first boss, the rest of the dungeon will probably go okay. The second boss can be a bit of a disaster, but the first boss is really your big test. Now, if you really want to... Oh, no, never mind. I'm thinking of the later part in the dungeon. Yeah. So there's three enemies right here. You're going to see them pop up as soon as we walk past them. I'm just going to walk all the way past them towards the door. You want to kill this one first. I honestly don't remember why you kill the zombie barber first. I think he has some sort of attack that he does if you don't kill him fast enough. He's got the lowest amount of health. I don't know. It's been a really long time since I haven't seen the zombie barber die before it does the mechanic. So I honestly don't remember. But after that, just kill the remaining two zombie sailors, and you should be good to go. And then we're on to the first boss. Now, the first boss, pretty simple. Can summon AoE circles on the ground that expand? Can shoot a line AoE? Can, shoot, can do a, a giant point-blank AoE? Which, by the way, don't use stuns on this boss. Until, also, just noticed our ninja is not using, uh, poisons aren't on, just so you know. Poisons aren't on, just so you know. Yeah, he's doing much lower damage than he could be. Just letting him know his, his poison wasn't on. I, I said it in real nice. So he just put it on. So, uh, this boss, real simple. I'll explain it as we go. So you pull the boss, whatever. You pull him towards the wall, good. This is how the fight should start. Now... Very shortly into the fight, and every time the boss loses a certain percentage of his health, he's going to summon a bunch of dog ads. He's just got a very, very basic attack that he shoots at people. Now, these dogs have a breath attack that they'll do after a few seconds. If it hits you, it gives you a stack of, like, a crystallized debuff. And if you get three stacks of that debuff, then it explodes. You take a bunch of damage, and you take more damage for, I think, like, two minutes after that or something like that. It hurts a lot. So what you want to do is as a white mage, I'm going to talk... You, you want to DPS them down. That's that's the ultimate lesson, is you want to DPS them down. One thing I like to do is that, just in case they manage to get a cast off, it casts really fast, so it's really hard to just dodge out of the way of it. It's not as simple as that, unfortunately. Now, this is his other attack. He'll summon either one or two giant AoE circles. When he does this, you want to move out of them and move way out of them, because they expand. And every second that you're standing in them, they give you a stack of that debuff. And again, if it reaches three stacks, you explode. That guy is almost definitely going to get three stacks. Oh, wow, he didn't. Yeah, so you, it's, as you can see, it takes like three seconds for it to tick. But our damage is really low here, which actually makes the fight a lot easier. I know that sounds ridiculous, but the better your DPS is, the faster these Warhounds spawn and the harder the fight is. So trust me, even though it, it, it seems like it's a bad thing, it's actually a very, very good thing. I also, I think I interrupted that. I think I actually, yeah, I actually did. So now, okay, so he's summoning one in the center. That one's going to expand as well. Just get along the outside of the arena. Now, okay, so we got two more here, and then there should be two or four more spawning in a second. And he lost his crystallized debuff, so even though he was, you know, at risk of getting that third stack, 
Now he's at risk of getting a third stack. Now he's going to get a third stack. Now we have to make sure we're not staying near. That giant AoE that just uh, hit us, that just hit the tank, that's the attack that you want to stun. So at this... Oh, this is going to hit me real hard. All right, I'm going to go stand away from everybody, try to cure myself. I've got a stack of the debuff now. This is why just these dog ads spawn relentlessly if you have too much DPS. Now, of course, you need to have enough DPS to kill them fast, but not so much DPS that they spawn faster than you can kill them. You, you understand what I'm saying? So this attack, you want to stun usually, but we're not stunning it, so I'm just going to make sure it hits me against the wall. He just got a third stack. He's probably dead, yeah. He got hit by the AoE. There's nothing I can do about that. Oh my god, this is going to hit me real, real hard. Uh, oh, and I'm in fucking cleric stance again. How did I manage that? How did I do it twice in a row? I don't know. He popped hollowed. That works. So, yeah, we should, uh, after we kill these, though, we'll be fine. You can see how it can be a rough fight for new players. I don't know how I keep healing in cleric stance. That didn't happen in the last two videos. Oh well. We're fine. We did it. We could limit break. A lot of groups will recommend that you limit break to kill them faster so you don't have to deal with all of the uh, AoEs. But we did fine. It was a rough fight. I messed up a few times. Uh, there were a few other mess ups. But overall, we did it. It was one try. We're good to go. We move on. Life goes on. I get protect. And, well, stone skin too. No thanks because I don't have... I don't have swift cast just yet. I gotta move my... Um, you see my hot bar that's right above my cross hot bar? I'm actually, I originally planned to use that to track my cooldowns, except it's so close to the to the cross hot bar that I can't read it over the text that tells me what each ability is. I don't even read that text, so I got to disable that actually. All right, so from this point on, you're going to notice that there are crystals that drop from the ceiling. So whenever you walk into a room, always expect that a bunch of crystals are going to fall from the ceiling. And then when that happens, those don't deal damage to you, but other crystals that spawn afterwards will deal damage to you. So you do want to be careful still. Uh, we're going to kill these and then move past. Some groups just pull all three of them, run past, regardless of whether or not the crystals are falling. They don't deal enough damage to really, like, warrant you saying, oh, wait, let's not run yet. They just don't do that much. Like, they, like you see, yeah, it did zero. It didn't even break my stone skin. Like, I'm not going to waste my time waiting for it for that so these corrupted sprites are the next big enemy you're going to want to deal with here you normally want to try and kill it fast are we gonna make it yeah so uh you normally don't want to speed run this pull uh you speed run up to the corrupted sprite and then just go on but what we're doing right here is we're pulling all the way to this group and then we're going to kill everything together it's a lot riskier of a pull because these guys have an attack called Banish 3, which you're seeing it cast right now, and it's going to hit us really, really hard. Never mind, it was targeted on him. I'm, saying, I'm actually grateful that that happened. And Banish 3, it hits really, really hard. You can silence it, you can stun it, but it hits really, really hard. Normally, you'll pull these three corrupted slimes, which fell from the ceiling along with that set of crystals. That doesn't happen very often. I think it's just that second set of crystals on the stairs that does that nowadays. But you just... Uh, just kill them when they spawn. I'm going to pop a shroud. Not really going to cast anything. Yeah, what the hell? Might as well. I was going to say, oh, let me regenerate MP while I have uh, while I have shroud up. Yeah, that's what shroud, That's what the point of shroud is, uh, Happy. Come on. Just going to do some, some dips right here. Work on my triceps with some dips. Get myself a fluid aura. And we're good to go. Run up. Now, there's another one of those corrupted sprites right here. Uh, well, it wanders back and forth, but it's it's at the top. We, we haven't seen it yet, but there it is. There it is. So we run all the way to the top, kill that one. You can act, He's probably going to pull it all the way to the next uh, to the next door. Now, if you go left here, there's a treasure coffer and a bunch of enemies. 99% of groups skip that. I can't even remember the last time I went down that way. So what most groups do is they just come into this room, they AoE down, whatever they have, corrupted sprite, zombies. There's a barber in here somewhere. There he is. There we go. And then we're almost at the second boss. We have one more trash pull after this, and then we're on to the second boss. I'm gonna throw myself some, uh, some heals right here. Good. No banish three. We're good to go. See, I, I, that barber was alive for so long. I don't know what, like I said, I don't know what he's supposed to do. I have aggro, though. And I don't have shroud, so. All right, we're good. We are good. I'm going to give everybody their stone skins now so I don't have to do the stone skin too later. Save that swift cast, yo. 
Next pull is just two bird enemies, uh, but when you pull the enemies, the, the second boss comes out and stomps you real quick. It just knocks you back, does a little bit of damage, but it's nothing to be concerned about. And then he flies to the next boss room. It's actually a really cool effect that I really like. All right, here it is. So we got these screamers. You can either pull them, just run up, pull them to the boss room. There's actually a strategy. I don't think we'll do it here, and I think the, the tank knows this. Where you can actually just pull them right here and then skip them. Oh, he is not seriously planning to do it, is he? No, no. He messed it up. They're too far. They're too far forward. Uh, they're not really too far forward. I'm not going to be the one to go pull the boss, though. So if they want to kill it, go ahead. Yeah, what a lot of groups will do is they'll have the boss pulled back here. It's actually this is a very common method for locking bosses out of, uh, or locking trash out of boss fights just so you can skip them. Uh, it's very popular. It looked like I had stone skin the screamer. I had actually stone skin the ninja while I was jumping on the head of the screamer. So you want to avoid that. So the big this is this fight is either going to go very very smooth or it's going to be a total shit fest. Excuse my language. So the boss at the very start of the fight summons a bunch of eggs along the outside of the arena. The strategy used to be, oh, you kill one egg in every set of ads that spawns, and that's all you do. Because every uh, every so often, one of these eggs will start glowing, and an ad will come out of it. And when the ad comes out of it, it runs around and it hits people. You know, you'd think, oh, you know, let's stop that. No, they don't hit hard enough to really warrant you countering them, is the thing. So we're going to have a few ad spawn. Most groups just zerg the boss down. I forgot you can't assume that uh, dot effect that the boss places on the tank. And uh, that's it. You're good to go. Now as the healer, I am going to be the focus of the majority of attacks here. But I'm not worried about it. Going to stone skin up. Going to regen up. And I can tank these things all day. As you can see, they do a little bit of AoE damage. But not so much that I care. <laughs> That's ultimately what it comes down to. Just like, wow, I do not care that I have aggro on these things. Now, the ninja first timer here doesn't know that you're kind of just supposed to stay on the boss. When the boss eventually flies into the air, you stop and you go after these enemies just because you have nothing else to do, really. But until then, this is generally what you do. So then he chased. No, no, tank, stay away. So um, when he flies up into the air, he's going to shoot three blasts at his current uh, enemy target. Tank could just run circles around it. If you're not moving, you probably won't be able to dodge it. And then they go back on the boss. We're good to go. So if you break an egg, it doesn't matter whether it's about to hatch or not. If you break an egg that doesn't just end up spawning an ad, the boss becomes enraged. When the boss becomes enraged, bad things happen. I'm going to... Oh, he's disconnecting. That's not good. Okay. Yeah, bad things start happening. When he reaches eight stacks, it's not so bad. But when he re if you kill two eggs back to back, he goes up to 16 stacks. And even though it only shows 16 stacks, for every egg you kill, he gets, an he gets eight stacks. And every few seconds, those stacks go down. You don't want to deal with that. Trust me. It does so much damage. He'll just literally go around stomping on people, doing tons of damage, reduce uh, increasing the amount of damage they take. It's a disaster. Just... Don't even trust the duty finder with hitting the eggs. That's why most groups just ignore the eggs. Because you, they legitimately can't trust each other to do the mechanic properly. It's just the most common way of dealing with it. Boss is dead, and we're moving on. Now, there is two more bosses, but to be honest, this next boss barely counts as a boss. And then immediately after the third boss is the final boss. So I have a couple more trash pulls, and we're good to go. I'm getting a lot of loot. I still haven't traded any of it in for Grand Company Seals, but at least I'm getting the loot. So, this is the final set of trash pulls. So, you have, I think it's two corrupted sprites and two or three corrupted puddings. But the two big things that happen is at the bottom of the stairs and at the top of the stairs are two ether valves. Uh, as long as they're turned on, they'll keep summoning these clouds. And when these clouds either reach a certain point of the stairs or touch somebody, they explode. Deal some damage. It's annoying. So, you want to turn the bottom one off before coming up here. And then you have a corrupted pudding and a corrupted sprite. Now... The Corrupted Sprite still has Banished 3. So that's bad. And then the Pudding has Divide. Which is also bad. Because what will happen is he'll, summon, he'll start summoning little versions of himself. And uh, those deal damage too. And we're probably going to aggro this Sprite right here. And we did. But it's okay. Because we're going to live. Well, I hope we're going to live. This guy's actually taking some pretty big hits. Nah, he'll be fine. See? I believed. So if you don't stun divide, you end up having to kill these corrupted petite puddings. They don't they're they're easy to kill, but sometimes groups miss them 
and that's more problematic. Like, they'll just have corrupted sprites hitting on the healer, and they'll be like, oh, we're good to go, because they don't see it for whatever reason. I've, I've died as a healer to just being hit. No, I didn't even die. I got, I got, I killed the third boss with the corrupted sprite on me, and then we pulled the final boss. I still had it on me, and nobody would kill it. It was ridiculous. <laughs> so you move on. There's, like I said, one more ether valve here at the top, one more corrupted pudding. And then you're on to the third boss. I'm going to close this ether valve real quick because it's annoying as hell. There we go. We kill this, and then the third boss should spawn after we kill this corrupted pudding. If it casts the vibe, if he stuns it, does he stun it? He stuns it. I love you, tank. I love you. I'm sorry I let you down at the start of the dungeon. This boss does some AoEs, summons some adds, just zerg him down. <laughs> just pretend like there's nothing. Oh, you know what? We probably should have explained that to... The ninja, because the ninja might actually leave the boss. Uh, what you want to do if you're a paladin, as a healer, you want to stand close to the paladin and have him cover you when the ad spawn. That way you can just full-time DPS. If you need to do a couple of, like, one heal right here, it's fine. But it's best if you just... Oh, yep. Oh, I got interrupted. He's dead. He's so dead. He's not dead. I got him. Oh, my God. He had, one, <laughs> he had 100 health. Uh, yeah. It's, that's not happening right here, but the boss is already dead, so it doesn't matter. As you can see, that's a really easy boss. <laughs> doesn't even get elegant tombstones. He does give you loot, but he doesn't even give you elegant tombstones. Tyrant, hardest boss NA. And now you're on to the final boss, which is going to be a familiar boss to you, if you remember doing the main story. Did I hit everyone with that? I think I missed somebody. Yes, that is right. It is the Siren. The summon from Final Fantasy VIII and other games. Final Fantasy VIII, though, is the first one that comes to mind. Not the only one, just the one that comes to mind. So this boss actually has a lot of different mechanics. And as a healer, he actually has some very, very specific mechanics. I still didn't do the focus target. <laughs> I still haven't done it. I'm going to Google it after this video, I promise. So uh, this boss, he, uh, she, I should say. She cleaves every auto attack on the main tank. I'm going to wait. Deathly Verse. Now this is the one ability that the healer has to look out for. It did zero to me. <laughs> Not a good example. So when uh, Deathly Verse places a debuff on a party map. Excuse me, on a, on a party member, and in, and if you don't remove the debuff before it, um, before it wears off, then that party member gets charmed and starts attacking allies. In order to get rid of it, you have to heal someone to full. That's not the debuff, the one I just got rid of. That was just a bleed debuff on the main tank. And like I said, this boss, all their attacks cleave, so you gotta try and keep it faced away from the group. Let's see if it does dead. Now, well, now nobody has stone skin, so. <laughs> Oh, well, except me. I have stone skin. So there it is. Deathly Verse. See how it gave me the debuff Siren Song? So all I have to do to get rid of it, heal myself to full. We're good to go. I'm going to actually throw stone skins around. So whenever the boss jumps into the air, she's going to do one of two things. She's either going to land back in the middle of the room, which she didn't do, or she's going to go along the outside and dash through the middle of the room. It's kind of annoying to dodge that attack, but um, do your best. Song of Torment. That's the attack. Uh, shouldn't be stunning that. That's not a good idea to stun that attack. So, yeah, this is going to be interesting. Deathly Verse. So, another thing, you notice that she summons zombie adds. You want to kill those zombie adds. Yeah, that's why it wasn't a good idea. That's why you don't spam stun on the boss. So, she just used an attack called Lunatic Voice, which actually um, reduces everybody's healing that they receive. Oh, and this guy is not helping by standing in front of the boss. And, uh, yeah, you want to silence it or stun it. So she jumped away again. She spawned on the outside of the arena. We move out of the way, and we're good to go. So among the ads she summoned are these crawling dudes, these storm sergeants. If they touch you, if they're targeted towards you and they touch you, they'll stun you. So just don't let that happen. Oh, i got to heal this guy to full now. Uh, you usually have your ranged DPS kill them and be good to go. But again, because, like, normally you'll stun or silence that, but it's stun immune for whatever reason. And, uh, yeah, that's not good. I'm trying to get rid of them all. But that's, and the tank gets the dot debuff on him. It just, it lasts such a long time. It's there specifically to counter Deathly Verse. She still hasn't done one other attack that she's supposed to do. But uh, we'll see if she even gets the opportunity. There's a, when she jumps up into the air, there's a chance that she'll land back in the middle. Let's see if she does it right here. This, might, this is the last opportunity we have to see it. There, so she lands back in the middle and does this AoE attack. If you stand in the middle of the room, it won't hit you. That just puts Deathly Verse on everyone it hits. So, all you have to do is just... That's why you stand in the middle of the room when she does the dash attack. It's actually best to stand kind of like right here. 
And then if you see her in the middle, move. If you see her on the outside, move um, to the outside. But, you know, majority of groups don't do that. Majority of groups just go for the, hey, we're in the middle. The other attack doesn't hit hard enough. So I'm not really motivated to move out of the way or to, like, make a really big concentrated effort on uh, on doing it. So that's it. That's Pharaoh Sirius. Uh, like I said, the first, the first boss is really the one you got to get past. If you can get past that one, then the rest of the dungeon's not so bad. Sorry, I messed up at the start there. I had a lot of healing and cleric stance for the first, like, between the start and the first boss of the dungeon. I don't know why. I just had a lot of... I was just messing it up a lot. There's no excuse. I was just messing it up a lot. And now I have enough soldiery to go get myself some gloves. I should maybe save up for an item level 100 weapon. I mean, I'm going to do that eventually... Yeah, no, 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 I'm gonna buy the gloves for now. It'll be, it'll help me in later endeavors towards getting my item level 100 weapon. I still have a lot of first time bonuses to get. That's the big thing to remember. I have so many first time bonuses to abuse with first coil, with all the hard mode primals, extreme mode primals. I have so many first time bonuses to abuse that I don't mind spending a little bit. So I am gonna get myself the Daystar gloves, I believe. That's that's the one we're looking for, right? Daystar gloves. Oh yeah, we are definitely gonna need to drop something. No, we are definitely gonna need to drop something first. But that is definitely what we're looking to get rid of. What do I want to get rid of here? I don't want to get rid of those. Sure, I'll get rid of these. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Sure, why not? Discard. I'm not even gonna. I'm not even gonna vendor them or sell them. I'm not even taking my own advice. Hell, I might have even been able to convert them. Daystar gloves, spell speed, it's not bad. And our item level is now up to 86. It's really just our accessories at this point. I mean, my, my boots, my boots, I don't know why I said it like that, uh, can still see improvement, but my accessories are really where I'm going to get the rest of my big item level increases. It might even be almost time to go through and do, you know, coils 1, 2, and 4. Might be able to get some I-90 accessories, which might be a decent upgrade. Um, and even then, I can also get a ton of first-time bonuses. Use those. Uh, turn 5, I probably won't do just yet, even though I'm adequately geared for it. I don't want to do that in the Duty Finder. Coil's going to be a bit of a monster. Because first, second, and fourth turns of the first coil, easily Duty Finder. From 5 on, not always so confident. <laughs> um, yeah, we'll see. I haven't really decided. I don't want to get carried through them. But I don't want to chance the Duty Finder. Maybe we'll do one in Duty Finder 5 just for fun. But regardless, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys in the next one. Until then, take care.